Hello engineers, prospective engineers, soon to be engineers. This is your favorite channel, Electronics with Professor Mughal. If you are tuning in for the first time, I welcome you all to Electronics with Professor Mughal. First and foremost, I like to thank all the recent patrons who have supported my content on patreon.com. I could not thank you enough because this support is extremely important and it's a fuel for me to get going. Okay. And uh, I want you to remind you all that there is insane amount of hard work, number of hours that goes into making this educational content. And without your support, it's absolutely not possible. So thank you for following and subscribing uh, onto my channel on different social media platforms. And I encourage you, those who have not, please subscribe to the channel and support the content. Like I said, you know, this is sort of like a fuel for me. and uh, you know it just gets me going this is a very special video and the reason I say that is because last few weeks I have received quite a bit of requests from um, a lot of you all over the world and what I realized is there is a lot of stuff that is you know a lot of questions that being asked is due to lack of understanding of how to design a digital circuit so what we are going to learn in this video I want to give you an exposure to how to design a digital circuit and then implement it onto an FPGA board from a very basic level. Okay, so how to go from a truth table to designing a circuit and then implementing it onto an FPGA board. And today we are going to create a bank vault system, uh, a lock controller that can unlock the code uh, unlock the code or unlock the door of the vault but there are some characteristics there are some behavior that we are going to set for this project using the truth table so again this journey from truth table to implementing on an FPGA board this is the basic phenomena of creating any digital uh, or finite state machine so without wasting much time let's get started let's get rolling okay so here is the bank office hours. So right now the switch is on, so that means the office hours are on. So if the president switch is on, that would mean the vault will be unlocked and therefore this LED is on. And then the 15 LEDs on the board are basically blinking. But say if I, if the office hours of the bank uh, are done the bank is closed which means this zero is, is this is set to zero and therefore the vault cannot be unlocked unless you have a president or one of the vice president so if I switch this to high that would mean the vault will be unlocked and the LEDs will start toggling this is VP not VP1 again if I do that both president and the vice president are there in the building and therefore you can unlock the vault okay another scenario here if the bank if the office hour uh, not the office hour the bank hours the bank is open if one of the vice president is there obviously the vault will not be unlocked but if the both vice presidents are there then you can unlock the vault which is indicated by this LED it is right now unlocked and the LEDs are toggling and as soon as one of the condition is not met LEDs will start toggling and the lock will automatically get uh, basically locked the so this is how it's working I want to talk about the project detail first so like I said again we are creating a bank vault lock controller uh, this example is from the book Digital Logic Circuit Analysis and Design by Nelson, uh, published in 2019. Design a digital circuit that serves as the controller for a lock that secures the vault area of the unsecured bank. Bank officials may open the lock according to the following protocols. Okay, so there are two requirements in order to unlock. One is if the bank is open during the business hours, during the weekdays, during the business hours, the bank president can unlock the door or 
both vice presidents, both of the vice presidents can unlock the vault during the business hours, okay? When it's off hours, when the bank is closed, then the president and the either of the vice president together can unlock it. Not president can unlock or not any or two of the vice presidents can unlock. It has to be a combination of president and either of the vice president. I also have the block diagram in the bottom left corner of the screen, which you see the inputs here is going to be open. Open is basically whether the bank is open or business hours or it's closed. Okay, so we're going to use a switch to open or close the bank. Uh, I also have one switch for the president, which is P, and then two switches, switch two and switch three that you see over here. Those are for the two vice presidents. Okay, so it's fairly simple and we're going to start out with the truth table. Now, those of you who are not really familiar with the Logisim, I want to show you something. So when you go over here, when you go over here, if you are not familiar with Logisim, Logisim is a simulation software for simulating digital circuits. It is available online for free. I'll leave the link in the description. When you download it, it should not take more than a couple of minutes. The interface would look something like this. And when you right click at the main and you click on analyze circuit, it will basically open up a window which will look like this. Now here I'm going to input everything for this circuit. And like I said, what are the inputs here? The input is open, uh, whether the bank is open or not. Uh, P is for president. And then I got the two vice president, VP1 and VP2, the two vice presidents. That's all my inputs. My output, I'm going to name it as unlock. And then finally, I'm going to click add here. It gets added. Uh, and then I move to table. If you're not really familiar with Logisim and how it works, I'll also leave a thumbnail or a screenshot of the video, which I did in the past. It's just an introduction to Logisim. Uh, but it's a great way to analyze your digital circuit. So notice over here when I click on this ta uh, table tab, I have this, um, you know, the truth table. We got four inputs, uh, goes range goes from zero to all the way to 15. So you got double zero, double zero at the very bottom. You got double one, double one. That makes it go for 15. So zero, when open is zero, that means business hours, uh, the bank is closed basically. It's not the business hours, the bank is closed. It's off hours. So the only way we can unlock the, the, the lock or, or the vault door is when the president, when the president or one of the vice president is there. So if you look at here, you got P1 and VP21. So this will be one. This everything over here is going to be zero, right? Here we have president and the vice president one. Uh, so we this would be one uh, that that means we can unlock the door uh, or the lock then we have one 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 that is definitely a one here now the rest of the eight combinations when open is one that means it's business hours time so either two vice presidents or a president can unlock it right so if you look at the bottom four when p is actually one this is pretty simple it's going to be one 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 here and for zero 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 this is going to be zero here zero zero one is going to be zero also zero one zero one zero one zero is going to be zero also and then one zero one one two vice presidents will be will allow you to unlock the door as well okay now if i click on build circuit it will automatically build a circuit for me but uh, I'll get back to that to that later, but if I go over here now, I can get the expression for the output unlock right here. If you go to minimize, you will get the minimize expression that would you would get something from the K map. Uh, you can copy this expression if you like. I'll just go back over here and copy this expression and I will need that later when I do the very log coding over here and if I click the build circuit over here it will ask me to whether I need to whether I want to create the circuit using two input gates only or 
used NAND gates only. I'll just go with two input gates only and I click OK. And there you go. There is my circuit right here. And this is the circuit which we are going to build in Verilog, using Verilog in Vivado and then implement it onto an FPGA board. So this is the part how we got started over the truth table using the characteristics and the behavior, a setting of the behavior of our circuit using truth table and then designing a circuit. Now the next step would be to implement this onto an FPGA, FPGA board through Vivado. So we're going to use a Vivado platform. Just for the sake of time, what I did, I have already created the project. I have already created the source files and I have commented everything so I can just quickly go over and keep this video small. If you are unfamiliar with Vivado and if you are a very beginner, I highly encourage you to watch the video that you see on the screen right now. There's a thumbnail. I'll leave the link in the description as well. It will tell you exactly in a very simple way how to get started, how to create a new project, how to create or add source file or constraint file. So I don't want to you know, spend too much time on that because this is something I've covered in my other videos many times. So if you look at this right here, the first thing I have, like I mentioned in the demo, when the unlock, when the door is unlocked, the LED is going to be on, which is the rightmost LED. And the 15 LEDs, the 15 LEDs on the light, they will blink every half a second. As long as the unlock LED is on, they will just keep on blinking every half a second. When the unlock LED is going to be zero, that means president switch or vice president switch, you know, meeting whatever the criteria we set in the truth table, unlock LED goes zero. The 15 LED on the left will go zero as well. Okay, so the first thing I needed was a slow clock and it was going to be a half a second. Now, I did um, name it as a one second clock, but actually it's just the half a second clock here, half a second clock. And what I could do here is I can just rename it as half a second and just bear with me while I make this change over here as well. Um, clock uh, half sec save it and hopefully it should uh, update the settings here perfect okay all right now this is a half a second clock input clock remember this is the uh, basis 3 board clock here which has a frequency of 100 megahertz um, the clock here uh, that's going to be um, you know the output clock is going to be half a second uh, initially I had one second actually so I changed it to 0.5 so that's why it's, it says 1s but I can change this also over here half um, clock half and then say this is half a second uh, clock over here and I would need to make that change over here as well so this will be clock half uh, I'll explain when I do this changes um, half over here and hopefully it should fix everything okay so what's going on over here I got the input clock which is a basis 3 uh, board clock this output clock is going to be half a second clock it means a couple of two hertz okay so we are cutting down the frequency which is 100 megahertz to two hertz that would give me half a second uh, time period I need to obviously we're gonna need a counter which will count up to a certain point which would mean you know 0.5 seconds of time has elapsed so I go with the with a size of 29 bits so it goes from 28 to 0 uh, which would allow me to count up to uh, 49 million, 50 million, right? Initially, count value is set to zero. Now, whenever the positive edge of the clock arrives, the counter will go up by one. And at the same time, it will look for whether the count is 49 million or not, right? We are basically looking at 50 million count, but because we count from zero to 4999, nine 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 that makes a 50 million count right so that's why I have this 49 triple nine triple nine over here it's okay to have these underscore if you remove them that will also be fine so with this means initially count was zero 
When the positive edge of the clock arrives, the counter will start counting by one. If the counter has reached a value of 50 million, that is when, you know, the, uh, the, the negative half wave of the clock, the clock that I'm talking about this two hertz frequency clock now, uh, that much time has elapsed and then count is restored back to zero and then the clock half gets invert of clock half so initially it was zero then it gets inverted it starts counting back again up to 50 million keeps on doing it in a loop infinite loop and you will see a two hertz clock that way so it was pretty simple again this is something we have done in the past as well uh, let's move on to the bank vault lock controller what's going over here so i got the input clock this is purely for uh, 0.5 seconds clock remember the clock the only reason we have a clock here is because we want to toggle the led every half a second when the unlock led is on just as an indicator okay right it's kind of like when you enter your door you have a locking system when you put your fingerprint it scans through your fingerprint or unlock it it starts beeping and the led blinks few times and then it gets off right it's very really similar to that it's just extra feature that I have put in I got input P which is the president input uh, vice president one and vice president not so two vice presidents input open that's the bank op bank is open if it's uh, it's one this is going to be a switch and if the switch is set to zero that means the bank is closed it's off hours uh, we have the 15 LEDs which are going to toggle right uh, and then I got one LED, which is the rightmost bottom LED on the basis three board, which is going to, you know, stay solid if the door is, the vault is unlocked. Okay. Now, next part is to LED assigned to indicate whether the vault is unlocked or not. LED on means vault is unlocked. What I did over here, I'm using a sign function for the unlock. And what I did over here, I basically just copy pasted this expression from the expression that I got from the, the expression that I got from the logism. I just copy pasted this ex expression into Vivado right here. Just know that the plus operator is replaced by a vertical line and a dot operator is uh, replaced by an end operator in Verilog. Okay, so this is the same expression right here followed by a semicolon. Next up is the slow clock for the 0.5 second for blinking LEDs when vault is unlocked or the door is open. So I'm going to declare wire here and I'm going to name it as a slow clock. And I'm going to instantiate this clock right here. Remember, this is my top module, right? So I say clock half second. Remember, this clock half second name needs to match with exactly how it appears over here. Then followed by the identifiers, uh, I'm going to call it U0. Again, this could be anything, just a variable. Uh, and then, like I had over here, if I go back here, I got my input clock and I got my output clock half. So I need to define my input here. In this case, it's going to be the clock, which is basically the system clock. And then the slow clock, which is going to be the half a second clock. And I have already declared it as a wire, right? Now this part of the um, code is basically responsible for LED blinking when vault is unlocked, right? What I'm saying is whenever the positive edge of the slow clock, remember this is the half a second clock, this is the half a second clock. When a half of a second, the, the two hertz frequency clock arrives, if this condition is met, which is basically the same I have over here, means when unlocked LED is high equals to one, we got the equals to operator here. So we're evaluating it. When, if this condition is met or true, then we want LED to start blinking. And I'm just saying LED gets value, it gets in word of LED. So if it was zero, it becomes one. If it was one, it was zero, it'll be zero. It'll keep on, you know, toggling it unless, you know, this condition becomes false. And in that case, if that condition is not met, by default, all the 15 LEDs on the left will be set to zero, followed by N and then follow it by N module. So I'm going to save it and then I'm gonna click on my top module and then going to run implementation here. Click yes. 
save I made some few changes so I'm gonna save them and it's gonna take maybe a minute or a couple of minutes so just be patient Vivado is not one of the most fastest software so just be patient this is a very interesting project because we are taking it from a truth table and then implement uh, implement it onto the FPGA board so a lot of you struggle with this concept like how do we go from truth table to FPGA so this is a classic example it's not an advanced level project but it's somewhere between beginning uh, beginner or intermediate level project that you could do for your 2000 level or 3000 level course or as a as a as a as a hobby project it's a fun project now that the implementation is complete i'm going to generate bitstream file here remember i got a basis 3 board with the arctic 7 chip cpg236 uh, that's the family package with a speed of negative 1l generating a bitstream may take roughly about 60 seconds so just be patient with that and while that is going on I can also go to my constant file and talk about it again uh, I think I forgot to mention that so for the constant file you will have the clock signal this is the original board clock you got your four inputs basically those will be four switches open for the business hours or off hours P for the president and VP not and VP one for the two vice presidents and then finally I got the 16 LEDs with the rightmost LED being the unlock LED and rest of the other LEDs are basically for blinking when this LED is on so it looks like the bright bit stream is complete I'm going to plug in my board and then create an interface between my PC and the basis 3 board all I need to do is once everything is plugged in click open target and then click auto connect looks like I am connected here uh, and all I need to do is program the device now it should automatically pull up the bit file which it just created all I need to do is hit program and you should be able to see the implementation of your code onto an FPGA board. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I wanted to go and start off from a very basic level and tell you how to design a circuit going from a truth table, setting up the characteristic or behavior of a circuit and then implementing it onto an FPGA board using Verilog. So I hope again you enjoyed. If you haven't already, please, please subscribe to the channel. Support the content in any way you like. If you want me to make a video on a certain topic or you want me to cover a project, please leave your comment in the description. Till next time, enjoy your rest of the day and please stay safe. Bye.